Our today's topic is the idea or the subject of global business. I'm not going to say the globalization because that has some connotations which are a little negative sometimes, but more just this idea of global business. That business is becoming global and that most economies in the world now are connected. Things are commonly manufactured in one place and possibly packaged in another and designed in third country and then actually sold in the other countries. And this is all very normal now. What this means from a practical standpoint is that we all have to think globally now. We can't really afford to just be nationalistic or just be in our own little world in our own country anymore. Obviously, this is a strong argument for learning English and becoming a powerful English speaker because English is the global language of business. Like it or not, that's just the way it is. I'm sure that's the why people study English and the business English, and that's what this uh, lessons all are all about. You know, because you are going to need to communicate with people from other countries, and most likely you will be doing that in English. But even beyond just the English aspects of it, it's really important to get a wider, more global worldview. Because people think differently in other countries. They eat differently, they think differently, they live differently. Everything is different and you are not, um, if you are not actually familiar with that, there are that, a lot of culture clashes that can happen. So at the very least you need to do, I think, read up on the other countries and learn about other cultures, especially if you are dealing with them in your job or your business or you possibly could. Travel is also another important one. The more you can travel internationally, the better you are. Because that will start to open you up and connect you to the other cultures, other ways of thinking, living, all of these things. We all have to just become much more global in our understanding, I think. The world is now um, the big marketplace for just about every business. Every business, at least, you know, that's a big enough to supply a sufficient amount of products. And I think that some of the American companies and the impact that they have and how much of their revenue is derived from the other parts of the world beside the United States. One right at the top is the McDonald's. I think that McDonald's is probably um, in just about every country that people want to you know, eat hamburgers or chicken. IBM certainly has been a global business for a long, long, long time. And Apple is a global brand. Home Depot, I believe, has gone globally. So every aspect of every industry that you can imagine has become a global business. Um, you know, the, take a, the, the example of the Coca-Cola. There is a great one. You know, you, they have made millions and millions and millions of dollars outside the United States. That's the company that was formed right in the downtown Atlanta and they become very popular in downtown Atlanta and now they are um, just all over the world. As I say that the international language of business seems to be English. I'm not going to venture a guess as to why it is, but uh, I'm just glad it is because I'm not very good at other languages, but that's the way it is. So you are making the first step here in, 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 in trying to improve your business English skills. Your English skills, your business English skills. And that's critical because in a global environment, in a global business world, the people from all countries are going to be um, interfacing with each other and having deals of various kinds of across the borders of many countries. It could be from Europe to United States to Asia. You know, there is a quite a range right there. You know, so there's a lot of lot to be that, to lot to be said that we need to think of the world as our customer nowadays. And I mean that every time I read the newspaper or read the, the news sites, you know, there are always stories about the global aspects of the business, about the connections between different countries. The South America and China, for example, their economies are now interlinked. And of course, China and North America are strongly connected. 
China with Europe, Japan with all of those regions. Look at the just manufacturing, you know, now is is multinational thing where the parts might be made in the one place and they are shipped to another country where they are just put together and then they are shipped to another country where they are sold. So that's why you have to deal with people in all those countries. And of course, when you are doing that, you've got the language issue, which, you know, you know, like as, as, as we I've, we've been talking about that, you know, I think that everyone knows that English is the main global language. And after that, I think you've got cultural issues, basic cultural issues of just how people communicate, what they believe, what they values. Then you actually even have business culture where business is just done in a, in a, in a different way. I can speak certainly to United Kingdom because I'm familiar with it. I've been there. That business in United Kingdom is done in quite a different manner than it is in the United States. So if you are in America, I heard it from my friends, you will really have to go to try to understand how the, the United Kingdom people think and how they communicate and when they say something, what do they mean? Sometimes they will say things that they, they are using English, but they are communicating in a different way than the American would. And they are actually saying something quite different. And hopefully what I'm trying to help you with here is to get a hold of some of this American phrase so that you can improve uh, your English that way. Another important point in this global world today is that the whole different game because what happens in Japan, for example, has an, has an F effect on, on the economy of the United States. What happens to the economy in the United States has an effect on the economy of the Spain, which has an effect on the economy of Thailand, which has an effect on the economy of Canada. So it's all intertwined, we can say. I would compare it to uh, doing business in the United States. You know, I heard it from my friends again. In the United States, you've got 50 states to deal with, and they all have some different kind of rules, and they talk different too. You know, even though they are speaking English, but uh, there is a different slang and different phrases that they use. And the world today, take the United States, it's just the 50 states, but, but it's, it's what this, the world today is there's 300 nations that a company has the opportunity to deal with and obligations because there are products that are made in every country that are worth sharing with the rest of the world. And I think that um, this is um, it's kind of a, the change of our mindset. I think that most people certainly who are interested in business or business English, I can say, are aware of all of this. It's just a matter of being more proactive about it, really aggressively become more multi multicultural or to understand the international markets or at least the ones your company deals with or that you personally de deal with, or that you would like to deal with. So this is another one of those little key advantages that you can develop for yourself. And I know that in, in many, many, many other countries and in many companies, a high level of English ability will get you better career opportunities. And it's not secret. If your English level, your, your speaking level, your confidence, your ability to communicate in English, if that is all superior to most people in your company, that, that gives you a bit of an advantage. That will open up in new possibilities, new jobs for you that others might not be able to get. And likewise, if you visit other countries and if you become more um, comfortable and more skillful at dealing with people from other cultures and become more sensitive to different values, different beliefs, understand how to communicate to other people from different countries, especially it's, uh, if it's a country that your company deals with a lot, that gives you another advantage. So if your company constantly deals with Japan, for example, then take a trip to Japan, go on a vacation to Japan, read about Japan, learn about them, learn about their culture. Learn about Japanese communication, learn about how Japanese people do business. All of that will give you an advantage and may open up some new jobs for you in the future. It's kind of, you know, like uh, I think I, I used to always tell people about 
the managers, you know, I've, I've been the manager, I'm still managing some people. Put yourself in the other person's shoes, you know, how would you want to be treated and how would you want a manager to act toward, towards you? As I, I'm saying that if you are going to be dealing with the Chinese, then put yourself in, in, in their shoes. How do they think? What is their culture? What are they talking about? If you are going to be dealing with Germans, do the same thing. You know, just put now yourself in, in their shoes. Try to understand their point of view, particularly on the subject that you have to deal with them on. So, yeah, so, you know, in every way possible, small and large, try to become more global. Think more globally. Learn more about other cultures and countries. All of this will be, I think, to your advantage in the long term. See you next time. Bye-bye.